What is up guys? As you can see, we are back with another BIOS video. And this time we're checking out the BIOS on the ASUS ROG Strix B550F Gaming Wi-Fi. As I always say in these BIOS videos, this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of ASUS's B550 motherboards. Obviously, since it's an ROG board, the skin might be a little bit different. Um, but the settings should be pretty much the same. And if you use a ASUS BIOS in the past, a lot of things should be pretty similar. Now, I know a lot of you guys have had questions on how to enter the BIOS. I never say that because I thought a lot of people would know, but um, you just you know keep on pressing delete when you restart your computer and you should go right into the BIOS. It's pretty simple to do. Um, but with that out of the way, you should launch into easy mode. And I think this is where most of you guys will be doing some different settings and things like that. So in easy mode, um, of course, it gives us our information on our board, the BIOS version that we're running, the processor that we're running, the speed, the memory, and you know all of that good stuff. CPU temperature over here, um, our voltage, CPU voltage, our motherboard temperature right here. Um, and then our DRAM stats, so we can see we have 16 gigabytes of RAM in here and the speed uh, that it's at our information. We do have an NVMe drive installed, so that is right here. AHCI, uh, which is of course our SATA drive, we have right there. For anybody who wants to enable an XMP profile on ASUS motherboards, they call it DOCP. Uh, for their AMD stuff, uh, you, you know, it's disabled. You can just hit profile one and you just hit okay, and it enables your XMP profile. Under fan profiles, um, all of the headers that are on the board are right here, and you can see uh, the speeds of your fans. Of course, we only have our CPU fan connected here, um, but you can go ahead and see you know, what it is running at. Uh, Q fan control, this allows you to do your fan curves and everything like that, so you click in, and for all of the headers, again, you can set between PWM and DC mode, you can do uh, standard, silent, turbo, full speed, or manual. Manual allows you to set a custom curve. So if you want to do that on your fans, you can go ahead and do that. You hit escape to get out of there. Boot priority. Um, if you had more than one drive installed, you could just drag or drop these. Um, so you'll see all of your drives in this list here, and you can easily drag and drop. Easy, easy system tuning allows you to tune your system. So um, it's set by normal, you can do ASUS optimal, and I think that's the only options that we have here. So normal and ASUS optimal, um, just a simple, easy overclock that you can enable or disable. If you wanna change the aura lighting on the board, by default, the as soon as you plug in power to the board, the RGB lights on the board will turn on. If you wanna turn them off, you just click this. It's that simple. There is a search built in, um, and of course you can change your language if you want. That is easy mode. Again, it gives you everything that you want. I would say XMP or DOCP and your boot priority. It's all right here and it's all easy to see. And you can see your drives and your memory. So if you have any issues with boot or anything like that, you can kind of see what the board is seeing. Now, for everybody who wants to do some tuning and wants some more advanced features, you can go down here in advanced mode or we can just hit F7. And of course you can toggle between the two by just hitting F7. Now. In the easy mode, um, I was an AI tweaker, but you should be dropped into main here. Again, gives you all of the information, everything that you're running. There is a security uh, tab here that if you go in, you can set a user password and an administrator password if you want. Um, and then AI tweaker, this is where you're gonna go ahead and do all of your system tuning and change different settings. Again, like most ASUS motherboards, we get our targets up here. So if you're shooting for something, you'll be able to see you know, what you're gonna be shooting for. Um, again, if you are enabling an XMP profile, more than likely you want DOCP set up and then you'll see your XMP profile right there. Um, you can also put this on auto if you want. If you just want everything to run auto, you can go ahead and do that. And then manual, if you want to do some manual overclocking, you can go ahead and do that. Those are the three options that you really get. Um, again, if you're not doing anything crazy, you can just enable DOCP and um, you can you know, enable your XMP profile, which should show up in this list under here. Um, 
going through all of this, you know, your CPU core ratio, again, if you want to enable XMP, set DOCP, and then if you wanted to change your core ratio, you can simply just type it in. So um, target right now is 36. Of course, we can change that to say like 40. Um, oh, wait, that's not right. I don't think I have number locked <laughs> turned on on this keyboard. Let's see. There we go. Uh, there we go. So you can change that. Um, and of course, you can see our target at the top change. So again, I like seeing those targets because if I'm changing stuff around, I want to kind of see what I'm shooting for. You can also just type in auto and hit enter and it will go ahead and change that. Uh, you can do CPU core ratio per CCX. Your TPU, um, you can set those different values. Uh, precision boost overdrive, you can set that up. Again, if you're not doing overclocking, just best to leave everything on auto. Uh, your DRAM timings, if you wanna set your timings, you can go ahead and do it here. Um, very easy to do, just go in and you, again, you can adjust all of your timings. Of course, if you're overclocking your memory and you want to uh, tighten your timings, you can go ahead and do that. Digi Plus VRM, um, this is all of your phase control, power, load line calibration. Again, if you're overclocking, you might wanna mess with your load line, load line calibration. But for the most part, um, if you're just you know doing a basic setup, you don't need to change any of this stuff. Um, then you have your voltages. Um, so if you want to change your CPU voltage, instead of going to auto, you would do manual and then enter your value. Um, so like 1.35 and you just put it in there like that. So if you wanna change your CPU voltage, that's how you do that there. We'll put it back on auto. DRAM voltage is the same way. You just type in the value that you want. Um, and then you have all of the rest of your voltages and, and everything like that. So that is pretty much everything in the AI tweaker, you know, overclocking your CPU, setting your, your XMP or changing your timings on your memory. It can all be done in AI tweaker. Under advanced, again, this is everything that has, you know, everything that's on the board, the chipset, everything is right in here. Um, so TPM, we don't have a TPM device. Oops. Uh, let's go back here. CPU configuration. Um, again, this is everything. Uh, gives you information on your CPU and then the different things you want to enable or disable, you can go ahead and do that with your CPU. SATA configuration. Again, um, all of your SATA devices, uh, if you have one, you, you can see, we can see we have our crucial drive there. Um, NVMe RAID mode, you can set that up if you want to, but just everything that has to do with all of the plugs on the drive, it's all right there. Onboard devices, this is like your HD audio controller. You can set the mode for your PCI Express slot. Again, put it to auto because it would auto detect everything. Um, you know, again, this is for the RGB lighting. So, uh, LED lighting, when system is in working state, all on. So that means when your system is powered on, you want the RGB lighting's on. When the system is in sleep, hibernate, or off states, you can change this. So again, if you just plug in power, the RGB lights will turn on. Some people might not want that. You can do stealth mode, uh, aura only, aura off. You can kind of set that up. So some people don't like it when their system's not on to have the RGB lights on, so you can set that up. You can turn your LAN controller off. You can turn your Wi-Fi controller off, Bluetooth, uh, US power delivery in soft state as well. So this will allow you to get USB power when your uh, system is in a low power state, which is kind of good. So if you're charging something, you can still get USB power from it. APM configuration, PCI subsystem, USB configuration. Again, every, like legacy USB support, I always talked about that before, but it's always on by default now, so you don't have to really mess with that. Um, and of course you can control all of the ports on the board. You can enable or disable port. Network stack, HDD, SSD, smart information, so we can see the smart information on our current SSD drives. NVMe configuration, we do have an NVMe in here, um, so we can actually see it, and we can go in and get all of our information on that stuff as well, um, if you have an NVMe drive installed. AMD CBS, this is your core performance boost and a bunch of different settings for that. PBS. Uh, you can enable or disable Thunderbolt support there. Uh, AMD overclocking. This is the one that's going to ask you to accept. Uh, we've seen this before. You hit accept, and then you can go in and change a bunch of different settings that have to do with overclocking. Get out of that. And that is it for advanced. 
Under monitor, this is a real-time um, readout of your temperatures as well as your fan speeds and I believe voltages are in here. Yeah, voltages are in here as well. And again, in this menu, you can go down to QFAN and instead of having the graphical interface, you have this sort of drop-down interface if it's easy for you. Um, you can set that up if you want. Under boots, uh, you can go to boot configuration and set up your boot drives and everything like that. But again, it's much easier to do in the easy mode. Uh, CSM and then secure boot, you can set up as well. Boot override, I always talk about this. I love to see boot override because you set your boot priority to your hard drive and then you come into the BIOS and run boot override on a flash drive. So then when Windows restarts, it will boot to the hard drive and you won't have to worry about running over and pulling out that flash drive. So you have that there. Under tools, uh, Easy Flash 3 allows you to easily flash your BIOS. Um, you know, it will do it from a USB flash drive. It's super easy. Secure Erase um, will allow you to securely erase an SSD. So if you're selling your computer, you're selling an SSD, you're giving an SSD to a friend, you wanna make sure it's securely erased so they can't pull any data. So you can go ahead and do that here. Uh, Asus user profile, you have a bunch of different profiles that you can save. So maybe you have a gaming profile, you have an overclocking profile. You can go ahead and do that. SPD information will give you, of course, the SPD information of your memory that you have installed. Um, graphics card information, again, this will give you information on your graphics card. And we can see uh, visually that we have an NVIDIA graphics card running at X16 speeds. Um, and of course you can set uh, that as well. And then Armory Crate. So when you install Windows on this board, as soon as Windows loads for the first time, it's gonna ask you to download and install Armory Crate. I'm a big fan of this because it allows you to download all your drivers and get everything pretty much, well, you don't even have to click because it auto, auto installs, but it's just like a one click install for all of your drivers and software and everything like that. Now, some people think this is intrusive and they don't want this. Just hit disable and it won't happen when you install Windows for the first time. Um, I know a lot of people are big on you know privacy and they don't want that, but I, like I said, I think especially for beginners, it's not a bad thing. And then under exit, we can load optimize defaults, save uh, changes and reset, discard changes, and then launch EFI shell from USB drives. One thing I didn't talk about, uh, we have our full hardware monitor over here. Oops hardware monitor over here that gives us you know everything there as well and then i didn't talk about favorites so you can add any setting to this favorites menu um so if there's a setting that you're constantly changing you know for like our memory frequency i have to go into ai tweaker and then go down here it's just you know right in the menu um, so any setting can be added to your my favorites menu so you can easily access it which is really nice um, you can go ahead and do that. So I think this BIOS is really easy to use. Let's go back to easy mode. Again, the easy mode gives you everything that you want um, as far as like your first initial setup, you set your boot priority, you set your XMP profile, and you're pretty much good to go. It also gives you information. So if you know something's not booting, you can see the storage drives that it sees and, and all that kind of stuff. So if you guys have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys in the next one.